formally welcome this this group to hear our concert. And we're playing another concert of uh, partly of original. We're going to alternate between original compositions that I've done and and some blues compositions of Charlie Parker. And they can, it's easier to say something about Charlie Parker for some reason than about my own. Mm -hmm. the, the, the Parker things I've thought about, they're all blues compositions. They're all, that means they're 12 measures long. And, and he, uh, I think that he, looking back at it, as he was writing in the 1940s and 1950s, and then thinking of, uh, that he was consciously um, choosing to do, to write these blues compositions. And probably would think with Charlie Parker, he's probably one of the, best musical minds of the century, or somebody might say somebody else is better, but he's up there. So he, if he was choosing to write blues, he would say it's, and blues is primarily a vocal tradition. So it's uh, the, the choice of him, of Parker to write these 12 bar compositions. He probably wrote about 20, maybe a little bit more. And they were, everybody that came in contact with them as uh, ever since he wrote them, who's an aspiring musician has tried to play them. <laughs> and, and they're and probably uh, benefited from how swinging they are if you get them right, and how difficult they can seem at first. But uh, but they're only twelve measures long. So I thought that I've I've enjoyed playing them for ever since I came into contact with them. You know, I was about eighteen or something. I found some music that had it, and I had some records, and, and this, so it's been really fun to uh, try to play them. We've been playing them for a month. <laughs> you know, in a systematic way. I think I've been playing them for 50 years off and on. And it used to be the kind of thing you'd go to a, a session and somebody would call a Let's Play Au Privat or some song by, by Parker, and that's 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 fading. I think people aren't doing that so much, but but it's too bad. You know, they're, they're great songs. But, but the first one we're going to do, maybe we should start with it. Let's start with it, Parker, since I said all that stuff. I know. <laughs> We'll play, uh, we'll go down this list. And this, this first one's called Au Privave, A U P R I V A V E. And nobody I've ever met knows what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> it's private. But, uh, it's private, yeah. <laughs> no, I've asked French people, and they talk about it, but nobody has it. Nobody knows. <laughs> All right, uh, are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Give us a kill. Oh, one, two, three. <laughs>
Sabi naman. Ano Switch moods all together and play a, a song that I, uh, you know, I, I wrote the song without a, a conscious intent, and then I was trying <laughs> to think of a name for it after it formalized itself. And I was listening to uh, um, a, a record of uh, Ravel, a, a French piano player and French composer, and he uh, he had these titles uh, "A la manière." the Chabrier, like in, in the manner of this composer and that composer. And so I thought that's what I was doing. I was trying to write a song in the manner of Ellington. Mm. So that's what this song is, is called, the manner of Ellington. Mm. And we're going to play that for you now. All right. So piano intro. <laughs> Thank you. 
take care of it. Nice response. I forgot to introduce the band. I know you for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um, welcome to uh, Tim Gilmore and Peter Concilio. Woo! And we'll be uh, Five music every time. Thank yeah. you. And Quincy saw all of them. Back to the stage. We can have you back. We can have you back. And we're going to go return to the Charlie Parker side of the program with the uh, Back Home Blues. Maybe that's a appropriate. Uh, uh, of all his blues, this is like maybe a lesser, lesser known thing. And uh, we're going to. A little slower side.
Thank you. That was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, Parker Blues could still have some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Now we have plenty of a little different feeling. Uh, I've always liked Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> and I probably uh, uh, I hope I hope you all have too. I hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> and uh, I've seen all the movies lots of times, and I still like to read about them and think about them. Uh, I wrote a song one time that I called Chaplin. What? So uh, we're going to try to play it. See if uh, it, it has a it's a long, complicated form, and then it's and then there's a free section and played in eleven four, eleven four time. So eleven four is a, we'll enjoy it as, as three plus three one two 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 three one two. Drummer friend once said it was like a waltz with a limp. It is. Okay, intro piano intro. <laughs>
It's a mouthful. You guys are going to start a fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie Parker. Uh, the, uh, this one's called Bird Feathers. Bird Feathers is Charlie Parker's one. And a lot of the Parker, if you're trying to do like a Parker study, you always go into these. Uh, the titles sometimes are mixed up on the records. Uh, they don't always have the, the some might be called Bird Feathers on one record, and there's a different song on another record they're called Bird Feathers. <laughs> and uh, somebody asked Parker one time I read this, said, uh, uh, where would he, he come up with a name? So the tunes, and he said that uh, that letter feather always wrote them um, after he left the studio. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yeah. how much he was involved. Latin intro and.
glad that uh, Khalil is still here because I have more yeah. songs yeah. called yeah. Little Khalil. Yeah. For, uh, this uh, fantastic grandson. <laughs> that was, uh, uh, when he was uh, just barely born. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to try to uh, play it, see if it fits.
this version. Another park or two, and maybe a, a break, and then we'll come back and play another set of the same thing. That feels timing right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we got the uh, Boom, Boom Dino. Another Parker Blues, and I've heard different things. There's somebody with Teddy Bloom, and it's a kind of club. Uh, it's a B L U M E, but this is Bloom Dino. So who knows? But it sounds good to say it. <laughs> and, uh, 12 bar <coughs> composition full of interesting rhythm. <laughs> Surprise. And Parker's tunes, sir, we were talking about this, which I about there are a lot of, uh, uh, it's, it's related to blues, but there's a lot of major keys, like major scales and major chords, and then a lot of the uh, and typical blues by B.B. King, you don't hear that so much, or by another Jefferson. So it's really, it's, it's like, but what's a formal difference? There's a lot of them. But that's my view. That might be one. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. <laughs>
good time for a, a short break. All right. Thanks, for everybody, for hanging around and for round two. That's great. We're going to start the second set with a, a song I wrote uh, a bunch of years. When is this song written? 2018. I think it was a, a winter when I, I, somehow I, I re-noticed this. I bet I played some of this for some of you people that ever listen. Uh, this song is called uh, Minnie Ripperton Was a Soul Singer. So it's a song about uh, that tries to recall Minnie Ripperton and uh, just contemplation, just thoughts about Minnie Ripperton. And uh, lately, Minnie Ripperton is, um, has returned to public consciousness because her daughter, Maya Rudolph, has been on Saturday Night Live doing an impressions of uh, Kamala Harris. And, and she, she does good ones, so, yeah. yeah but uh, Minnie Ripperton uh, is well known for the hit, hit, being able to hit the highest notes of any human in, in history. <laughs> In captivity, yeah, that's the right to get there, yeah, yeah. But she was a soul singer and didn't uh, often get the right repertoire. So if you think, oh, Sonny like Minnie Ripperton, I'll check her out. There might, it's hard to, uh, they're not all wonderful songs. You know, I think that she didn't always get the best choices of material, but she always, she always put her heart into it, even if the songs <laughs> maybe didn't merit it. Then. <laughs> All right, so the piano intro. Uh, first, uh, I'll do it twice. <laughs>
thanks. Back to Bird. I've got some buttons on the table there that say Bird lives on it. You could take take one. Of them. <laughs> They're free, free buttons. <laughs> take one. I better hurry up and get one. <laughs> the uh, then we're gonna do uh, Blues for Alice, another Charlie Parker song. <laughs> And a lot of the Parker songs or the blues are in the same keys. Interestingly enough, they're. Uh, I was thinking this one's in uh, Blues for Alice is in F. They all have different changes. They don't all use the same simple structure. But he wrote in B, B flat a lot and F and C and and that's and we could find one in E flat maybe. I think I think that's kind of it. But it was not a problem. He didn't find that he was he had exhausted the key of C you know, or key of F. You know. <laughs> Let's write another one. I think it was a great idea. I think like a lot of the other thing that Parker did a lot was to use uh, to take a popular song and change the melody around. Take this, everybody knew the harmonies, so he didn't have to teach all the musicians everything. <laughs> you know, like he already knew this song, and you could, you know, well, we're just going to change it around a little bit. And I think with the blues, that was a big factor too, because everybody sort of knew how to do that little little bit. What then happened? I don't know. I think about all the stuff. How did this stuff come up, and how conscious of of all this was Parker, or whether he was just playing the blues because everybody did, or like you know, or how, if he really thought about it in an abstract kind of way, or what I'm doing. I'll write twenty blues. It's really condensed, uh, like like a lot of the uh, symphonic music takes pages and pages. Yeah. And this is just twelve measures, so it's really. <laughs> But it, it's not saying one is more rich than another. You know, it's really just a different hierarchy of perfections, right? <laughs> All right. Um, Blues for Alice. And, uh, yeah. uh, you want to count it? Sure. No, okay. One, two, one, two. <laughs>
<laughs> switch moods again. Uh, this uh, this song is has uh, has. I'm sorry to apologize. Has a story. Um, uh, the, the title is "If You Go." On, it's a song I wrote. And it's called "If You Go on a Spree." It, go whole hog, including the postage. And that's from a quote of um, Gurdjieff, a famous, uh, I don't know what to call him, a famous what, uh, person, uh, that, um, you know, mystic, uh, charlatan, con man, geni genius, uh, <laughs> author, uh, a world traveler, a founder of educational schools. He, uh, he, the, um, he, he at one point said, if you go on a spree, uh, go whole hog, including the postage, which I always thought was funny. And I, I, I met a guy who, uh, his name was Billy Kaysen. Now, I hope he'll hear this on the community TV. And you know, I don't know where he lives now. He was living in Afghanistan when he heard about, when he heard about Gurdjieff. And he was so impressed that uh, he changed his name from Billy Kaysen to Reef Whole Hog. Uh, and his... Uh, and his uh, so, so when you go on a spree, go whole hog, including the postage. But then the funny, the funny part is that later on in his life, he uh, he's still friends with uh, we have a mutual friend and they're just still in touch. And he's he said that um, he didn't realize that uh, the first part of that is if you go on a spree, go whole hog. But he thought just just go whole hog. So he changed his name to Reef Whole Hog all the time, not just when he was on a spree. But 30, 30 years later, he realized that Gurdjieff really meant, didn't mean your whole life should be like that. <laughs> this is pretty funny, <laughs> I think. And so the song got called that. <laughs> maybe just maybe you don't even need the song, it's just a story. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to play it anyway and hope it's uh, I think hope it's good music you know? I don't know. these lyrics I guess <laughs> somebody tell that story and one, two I would say it's because it's a Latin, Latin beat one, two, one, two <laughs>
spree go whole hog, mm -hmm. including the posters. I yeah. uh, got maybe uh, a couple, a couple, a couple more left. You want to do um, cool blues? Will this pick up if I use that? Okay. Cool blues.
more tune? Song for Russell Schultz. For, song for Russell Schultz, exactly. Or another blues. Or what? Or another blues. Song for Fred Russell Schultz or another blues. You have a vote? No. No. Okay. Our <laughs> one slow song. <laughs> I would. I was like. To, I'd like to do the Russell Shutt song. Yeah. There seems to be an occasion for it. It's, uh, there's a, a book that's in your local bookstores called uh, "I Am Maroon," and it's uh, Quincy's wife Kanye ed edited and helped. Not edited. She co-authored it. Russell Shutt's a uh, uh, great political philosopher. Um, had been a political prisoner for a very long time, 40 years or something like that. And uh, his, um, it's worth tracing it down, uh, S-H-O-A-T-S, -S, Russell Schultz. And his biography is um, autobiography. I'm reading it. It's great. And it's, uh, it's terrible and great. Can you uh, purchase it here? You can't. You have to, it's a new book. It's a new book. Okay. So you have to go to like Yankee Bookstore or some new bookstore ordered online. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, yeah, I think it's totally a, a good book. And it's a great introduction to what his political philosophy is, which is one of the reasons to, re to read, to, to become aware of. But his life is amazing. And we're always dazzled by people's lives and how they, somebody spends somebody, somebody spends 40 years in jail and 30 years in solitary confinement and maintains an uh, amazing uh, worldview and consciousness and uh, enthusiasm and um, uh, interest and uh, scholarship. And, uh, so, it, but that's not, that's just all amazing, but then there's what he actually thought, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is worth tracing down. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, and um, this song came out of a, a, a book launch of, in 2013, where, where Quincy uh, ed edited this uh, book of uh, Russell Schultz's, uh, mostly his pr prison writings, I guess they were. Is that a good way to describe it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had a book launch for it here, and it's, it's one of the great things that happened ever in this bookstore. <laughs> so we're going to play the song after all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's almost like program music. You can hear parts of his life. He spent a lot of time in solitary confinement, and it is, uh, uh, there's a lot of reflection in it. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll hear it. One, I see. Let me do the. Let me do the last um, two measures.
go going home on a park cartoon. <laughs> We've got uh, to now's the time. Now's the time. <laughs> yeah. Is that already a little, a little slower? No, no, the last one was slower. Okay. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> 